Welcome to our first video in the electrochemistry topic. We're looking at starting this topic. Electrochemistry is all to do with electron transfer reactions, redox reactions, and so we're going to start off just looking at the characteristics of those reactions and the setting up of what we call redox equilibria. I'd strongly encourage you as you're watching this video to attempt to answer the questions that are posed and to try and make this as interactive as possible. So let's begin by thinking about the reversibility of electron transfer reactions. So here what we've got is copper sulfate solution that has been reacted with zinc. And in this case here, we've got copper that has been reacted with silver nitrate solution. And what I'd like you to do is think about what equations what are the reactions that have happened and what has happened to the copper in each case so pause the video and see what you think okay you should have found that in this case here we've got copper two plus ions gaining two electrons to become copper metal is what's depositing on here but in this reaction here copper is actually losing electrons to become copper two plus plus two electrons. So the point of this is just to show you that depending on the conditions, what else is around, in this case zinc, in this case silver nitrate, you can either have copper two plus gaining electrons from copper, or you can have copper forming copper two plus and two electrons. So copper can either be, in this case of this reaction here, copper is being reduced, and in this case it's being oxidized. Now, if there's nothing else around, so in this case here, there was either some zinc or some silver plus ions around, then these reactions are essentially irreversible. But if we have a closed system here where only the copper is present and some water, then we can get a dynamic equilibrium established. So how does this happen? Well, it starts off with copper atoms in the copper metal losing electrons and becoming copper two plus ions, leaving behind a couple of electrons here, which I'll show in a different color. So the two electrons there left by each atom on the metal. So in this case here, the reaction that's happening is copper forming copper two plus and two electrons. But eventually that's gonna have happened to such an extent that we're gonna have a lot of copper two plus around and a fair few electrons then left on the piece of copper And then the reverse reaction can happen. So these coppers can then react with the electrons, gain those electrons, become copper metal again, the copper. And eventually an equilibrium is going to be established where you would have, say, as a representation here, a few copper two plus ions because copper tends to prefer to stay in the zero oxidation state uh, and some electrons left on here so this is the redox equilibrium established and we often represent these reactions in a reversible reaction written with the reduction as the forward reaction So let's consider just very briefly the factors that affect the equilibrium position. Um, so the really important thing that you realize here is that the species in the redox equilibrium will affect the position. And that really is the basis of this whole topic of electrochemistry. So we considered copper in the previous slide. There's relatively little ionization of copper 2 plus.
However, if we look at a metal like zinc, zinc, so in this case here, the equilibrium is favours copper. So the equilibrium is well to the right. In the case of zinc, the equilibrium is less far to the right. So have a go, pause the video and see if you can draw what the situation will be like for zinc on this electrode that shows the equilibrium is less far to the right. Okay, let's think about what you would have, might have drawn. So in this case here, the zinc is more likely to lose the electrons and so we'll end up with a few more Zn2 pluses. around the electrode and because you've got to balance out the number of electrons it should look like that. The second fact that affects it's the conditions so that could be either temperature or concentration and that's really concentration of species in solution so there'll be a whole video devoted to this but for example just as a heads up if I have either water in here or copper sulfate solution that's going to markedly affect the position of the equilibrium you might like to think how that uh, is going to happen and if you're interested as I say there is another video that you can watch on this but the the point that I just want to bring out of this at the end is that we need standard conditions to compare positions of redox equilibria because if we don't have those standard conditions then we won't be able to really be comparing things in a valid way.